two reactions of sulfuric acid are shown in the diagram below and then the first question uh, which is 8.1.1 says define a lorry bronsted base right uh, this is the guy or the girl not really sure that defines a base and an acid the easy way right an acid it's a proton donor and then a base is a proton accept right so 8.1.1 proton acceptor and you get two marks and then 8.1.2 says write down a balance equation for reaction one let's take our attention to reaction one so reaction one we have sulfuric acid h2so4 and naoh so we have an acid plus a base right and an acid and plus a base an acid and a base will always give you a salt plus h2o right that's just the general idea when you have an acid and a base so we have h2so4 plus naoh and this will give us something right uh, let me put the arrow here for the sake of space so we need the acid to donate protons right and then we need the base to accept so when the acid donates we're gonna have uh, this h2o here from the general formula right so we're gonna have h2o so if we have h2o uh, on the acid we're gonna be left with so4 so this na which was accompanying the oh which turned to h2o will be here with naso4 right uh, it will be our salt but then i want you to realize something since h2so4 lost two hydrogens it will now be so4 two minus right and then we know that na is only a plus so we're gonna need two na's so we're gonna have na2so4 plus h2o now when we're at this point we can then balance our equation so we have uh, two hydrogens here we have one here and then here we have two so the hydrogens are not balanced how can you possibly balance this hydrogen if we put a coefficient of two here we're gonna have four on the right and we're gonna have three on the left but if we put a coefficient of two here then we have four on the left and four on the right so now the hydrogens are balanced we can look at as we have one s here we have one s here so that is balanced and then let's look at the oxygens we have six oxygens on the uh, left hand side and then on the right hand side we also have uh, six oxygen so it seems like all is well and we can move to 8.1.3 8.1.3 but for the most part uh, there's only a few reactions you're gonna be examined on right so just go to your exam guideline go through past exam papers and just memorize all the reactions that you see and then 8.1.3 says write down the name of the salt represented by x so the salt represented by x is na2so4 what is na we know that na is sodium and so4 is sulfate right and that is exactly what the name of our compound is the name of our salt is sodium sulfate right but then it's not all the time that you just uh, take the names of the different elements and then you just call it that and then 8.1.4 says let's write down the formula of ampholite a ampholite a is in our reaction 2 right so in our reaction 2 we have h2so4 plus h2o and then it gives us we know we're supposed to have h3o plus so the sulfuric acid only donated one proton right so here we are left with hs 
o for minus right <coughs> so uh, the name of our ampholite is hso4 minus but is hso4 minus an ampholite yes it is indeed an ampholite in this reaction is acting as a conjugate base right but then if you say hso4 minus plus h2o then it's gonna act as an acid and then let's move to 8.1.5 write down the formula of the two conjugate acid base pairs in reaction 2 so we've already wrote down so we've already written down reaction 2 right let's just look for the acid base conjugate pairs so h2so4 is an acid and then when it loses the protons uh, we get the conjugate base right so if this pair is acid and base then the other pair by default it will be our acid and base so we can see h2so4 and hso4 minus is an acid base conjugate pair and then h2o and h3o plus is another acid base conjugate pair so whatever remains when an acid has donated a proton is the conjugate base right that's the rule of thumb now let's move to 8.2 8.2 says a solution of sodium hydroxide n a o h uh, is prepared by dissolving six grams solid and aoh in 500 centimeter cube of water uh, this solution reacts completely with 10 grams of impure ammonium chloride nh4cl according to the equation below and then there we have our equation and it says calculate the concentration of naoh so 8.2.1 NaOH. Uh, problem solving 101. Uh, we have to write down the information we know about the NaOH, right? So we know fully well that the mass is 6 grams and then the volume is 500 uh, centimeter cube. And we want to find uh, the concentration. Concentration is number of moles divided by the volume. Uh, so from the mass, we can find the number of moles and then we have the volume here so let's go ahead and do that so the number of moles will be equals to the mass divided by the molar mass the mass is 6 grams and the molar mass of NaOH is 40 so we're gonna have 0 0.15 moles right now we can say that the concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume 0 0.15 divided by 500 centimeter cube which you're gonna divide by a thousand to convert to decimeter cube so we get here in concentration of 0 0.3 uh, moles per decimeter cube and now we can move to the second question which says uh, let's calculate the percentage impurities in the NH4Cl. So let's break down percentage impurities. So we usually calculate percentage purity, right? So I'm assuming that percentage purity plus percentage impurity should be equal to 100%, right? So we can basically find the percentage purity and then from the percentage purity, we're gonna say 100 minus percentage purity is percentage impurity. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have 8.2.2. So we know that when we want to find percentage purity, we will need the mass, right? So let's say NH4Cl. So at the end of the day, we're going to need the mass, right? We know that initially the mass or mass total is 10 grams, right? We're going to find the mass uh, for purity. We will find the mass of the pure substance. So the mass that reacted, right? So let's go ahead and do that. What information we ha do we have? Let's write our equation. NaOH plus NH4Cl uh, is giving us uh, NaCl uh, and so on, right? So from the NaOH, 
we know that uh, the concentration uh, is equal to 0 0.3 moles uh, per decimeter cube and then uh, the number of moles is 0 0.15 moles and then we're supposed to use this information to ultimately find the mass of NH4Cl, right? Because there's no way we can find the percentage purity without knowing the mass. So how are we going to do that? We are definitely going to use the mole ratios of the two, right? Because in chemistry, for the most part, you're finding the number of moles and using it to find other quantities. So we can say that the number of moles of NaOH divided by the number of moles of NH4Cl will be equal to the balancing coefficient of NaOH is 1 and NH4Cl is 1. So now we're going to uh, cross multiply. The number of moles of NH4Cl will be equal to 0 0.15 moles. The number of moles of NaOH multiplied by 1. So now we have the number of moles of NaOH. We can then find the mass of the NH4Cl that reacted, right? So the mass is given by the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. We know fully well that the number of moles is 0 0.15 and then now we want the molar mass of NH4Cl. Uh, I think it is 53.5, right? So we get a mass of 8.025 grams right so 8.025 grams it's pure and then the remainder is impure right so we want to find uh, the percentage impurity not the percentage purity right so we know fully well that percentage purity uh, is equals to mass of pure divided by mass of uh, the entire symbol right multiply by a hundred uh, so percentage impurity uh, will be equal to the mass of the impure right divided by mass of simple multiply by a hundred it's a bit of you know a trick equation but not that much not that much so the mass of the impure, we say that initially we had 10 and 8.025 reacted. And then uh, divided by the mass of the pure, which is 10, uh, multiplied by 100, right? And that is 19.75%. Uh, uh, you can do it even uh, the other way that I suggested. You can find the percentage purity. Uh, so when you find the percentage purity, uh, it will be 82.25 percent, right? So you would say 100 minus uh, this value here, and you will still get 19.75 percent.